Hey YouTube, it's Erin and I am the Handbag Housewife and I'm back again with another video. Today's video is going to be a coach unbagging. Yay, you heard that right, an unbagging, oh my. I do not like it one bit when my bags come in bags. I say, boo, boo department store, why did you send this in a bag? But alas, they don't listen to me. And in fact, they put my mailing label on both sides of that package. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull what's inside out. And you'll see, I couldn't even take a peek at it the way that it's wrapped. It's like Fort Knox. So at least there's that. At least they wrapped what's inside the bag well. Before I get started, I did want to remind you that I do have two items for sale in addition to my watermelon camera bag, which is still available for $150. I have this long shot bag in the Platinum Mock Croc, and it is $395. Retail is $510 plus tax. It comes with this beautiful silver chain. And then I also have this black Mock Croc with almost a patent type finish. I'm keeping the slate blue as well as the ivory one that looked like this. And so I just didn't think I needed this one, especially since I have the lambskin quilted Longchamp Extra Small in the black on black. And of course, the cream one is very similar in shade to this one without the metallic luster. This is so pretty though. So this one is $3.95. The black one is $3.25. If you're interested, contact me down in the description box. I will put all that contact information. So I'm going to rip into this bag and pull it out. It looks like she's factory wrapped. I did try to peek just a little bit, but this is as far as I got. It came with packing tape right here, so I kind of wondered if it could be a return where a customer tried to rewrap it like they had received it, but I'm just not sure it is. I think that Bloomingdale's might have tried to wrap it. This is concerning right here. You never ever want to put packing tape where it could touch the leather because it could totally take the finish right off of the leather. I've seen that happen. But here she is, the beautiful wine pillow Madison. Now I've got to get my spectacles on because now that I'm 45 and perimenopausal and falling apart at the seams, I can't see that well. And let me just tell you, at first glance, she is a stunner. There's very little wrinkling on the flap. There is contrast stitching, which I totally didn't expect. The stitching is a light pink. And so far, my, my stitching on these bags, I think it's all been pretty much the same color as the bag. So that's a different twist to this wine colored option. And this, the last I checked as of today, when I'm doing this unbagging, is still on sale at Bloomingdale's. I think it's 30% off. And then when I bought it last week, I got PowerPoints. So I earned, I think, a $50 or a $75 gift card on top of that, which makes it an even better deal. The inside of the flap also looks good. Let's go ahead and take this wrapping off. We've got to explore. I've seen the inside part here look really warped. Look how smooth that is. For a bag and a bag, we're doing pretty well. There is a dent right there from where that part folds down. That's okay. That's all hidden away. And the bottom is very smooth. That doesn't always happen either. I took my glasses off and I'm not sure why. One thing I wanted to remind you all of is that this is a mixture, I think, of both lambskin and calfskin, and you can kind of feel textural differences between the two. I think that the trim bits and the hang tag and the inside of the flap, I believe, are calfskin. And then I think that the softest bits with the quilting in it is a lambskin. It's looking really good that I'm going to keep this bag. So I'm going to unwrap her all the way. I sold, you guys aren't going to believe it, I sold all my pillow tabbies. And I did it because I haven't worn them. I have reached for these pillow Madisons, but I haven't worn the pillow tabbies in a long time. And the green one I never wore. I think I might have worn the purple one once. 
I wore the ivory one a couple times and my biggest holdup with selling the ivory and the black one, which I also never wore, was that I had some straps that matched them. But when I looked around at my coach collection, I still have a few bags that match those straps in my collection besides the pillow tabby. And I feel a little bit more safe carrying those bags. The pillow tabby, I always just worried a little bit about because the leather is so smooth with no quilting. And I just worried that I'd scratch it and then it would be messed up. Although in the times I did carry those bags, I never scratched them. So I guess I might just be a worry wart. I also sold two of my pillow Madisons because I've decided not to buy any more dark hardware with Coach. I really just prefer the brass and the silver hardware. I never had any issue with my pillow Madisons. I feel like the, the hardware on the pillow Madisons is better than on, let's say, the Coach Cassie or the Cassie 19. I did use the turn lock multiple times. I did move the chains through the grommets multiple times and did not see any chipping with those, but I still worried about chipping in the future at some point, which all bags are going to chip at some point. Erin, get it through your crazy brain. But I decided I was just going to buy gold and silver hardware from now on, unless it is Longchamp, because their shiny gunmetal hardware has basically just a lighter version of itself underneath the top coat. So if it chips, it's not really noticeable. And it's also not on the front part of the bag either. It's usually hidden behind a top handle or on the inside of the hook of the strap. And so I just feel a little bit more comfortable with the Longchamp gunmetal hardware than let's say Coach. But the hardware on the Pillow Madisons wasn't actually gunmetal. It was a black copper, I believe. So it was a little different. This beauty is gorgeous. I cannot see a thing wrong with her with my limited vision. And that's pretty darn exciting because I ordered multiple chalk pillow tabbies from Bloomingdale's and received multiple ones I wasn't happy with. And in the end decided that I would just opt for the chalk studio bag because I got one of those first try without any issue. And so this is exciting that I got a good one. I also lucked out with my Coral Pillow Madison as well as my Chambray Pillow Madison. And also, let's see, my Army Green Pillow Madison. They were all good. It was just the chalk I had trouble with. But this one is so pretty. I just can't believe that stitching. It's a pale pink. Think how pretty this would be with like a pale pink shirt right now. I mean, it would kind of transition into spring since that's a pastel color. Let's look inside. I don't want to pull all of the stuffing out just yet. These are laid out the same way. They all are. And I have a whole slew of videos on the pillow Madison, which I can link the playlist down in the description box below. But there is like a, a micro suede lining on this side. And then the leather here goes all the way to the bottom on this side. It's kind of a partial leather compartment, but three of the sides are the micro suede. And then inside of here, this is all micro suede on both sides. The only one of these that I have found that's all leather inside is the Sherling one. And honestly, I think I prefer the micro suede just because it won't get scratched up. And I think it's a little bit lighter weight, which is probably why they used it in the Sherling because that's a lighter weight one anyway, since the Sherling isn't as heavy as leather is. So I think that... It's pretty cool. I don't know. I, I was starting to say I think that something and I forgot, so I just ended in pretty cool. This is an awesome little bag. I am wearing the same clothes I was in the last video. This is on the same day, if you didn't know. By the time you see this video, those other bags may be all sold and gone, but I really think this is a beautiful bag. I don't like wearing these crossbody, but you definitely can. I have converted my coral one to be kind of like this so that I can just grab the top handle and go and then throw this over my shoulder. And I have a video about how to do that. I probably will do that with this one too. It's more comfortable to double shoulder these than it is to do the top handle look, but I only carry these such a short distance. I don't take them on anything where I'm going to be walking around with my bag on my arm all day. So. 
having the cute little top handle moment, sort of like the Chanel 19, it works. So, so I think that's all I have to say about that. I will link this bag down in the description box if it's still available. It's probably still available and it's probably still on sale. So head on down there. And if you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Do it and ring the notification bell so that you are notified of future exciting content such as this. Also, go find me on Instagram. The name there is the same. It's the at symbol, then the handbag housewife, all lowercase. You can DM me there or you can email me at thehandbaghousewife at gmail.com. If I don't hear from you, I will see you again real soon. Take care and have a fabulous day. Bye.